by a wide mile, the most requested songwriting topic on the channel is, of course, transitions. There are three basic elements of transition. The first one is the musical aspects of the transition. This is all about making sure that the chords, melodies, and rhythms, and all of that sound good going from one part to the next. If the two parts are in different keys, for example, you're gonna have to come up with a clever way to modulate between the two. We are actually not going to cover this today because it's kind of a long, dark music theory rabbit hole. But if the parts don't flow musically from one to the other, then everything else we're gonna do here is gonna be putting lipstick on a pig. The second element is performance stuff. It's things that you can do on your instruments to transition better. And then the third element is production and sound design stuff. The song that I'm using to demonstrate all of this stuff is the one from the Fiverr top line video that I put out recently. So here's the two parts. We're just going from the verse to the chorus. So it definitely doesn't sound bad, it works to go from one to the other, but it is completely not exciting, it is very flat. The only thing that really changes dynamically is that it gets a bit louder and there's a lot more parts happening, the snare drum's a bit louder, that sort of thing. But what we want to do is like make these last few measures really exciting. We want to indicate to the listener that something awesome is coming and then just like build the tension until we hit the moments, right? The beginning of the chorus, the drop. Transition. Before we dip one toe into making some cool transitions today, I need you to be very honest with yourself and ask yourself, do the two things you are trying to transition between actually work together? Or are you just trying to mash together two things that don't belong? Because if that's the case, you can do everything that I tell you to do in this video, and it might still sound like crap. So, the first thing that you should try is to see if there's something else that might fit better. Transition. So we're gonna start with the performance element of transition, and we're gonna start with the easiest, simplest, most old school transition ever, which is just a drum fill. I've got lots of different layers of drums going on in this song, lots of electronic stuff and then like real drums. But I played this fill on the quote unquote real drums, the fake real drums. Because this is kind of a groove oriented track, I didn't want to lose the groove for too long. But if you want to extend your fill for two or four bars, that'll add a bit more tension. It'll sort of draw it out a bit more. Like there's no question that something is about to happen when you hear that sound, right? It creates anticipation. The next one I wanna show you is pretty unbeatable in the performance department. It's really hard to beat a bass slide. They always sound awesome, it feels awesome. It's very subtle, but also very powerful. I also think it's kind of hard to have too many bass slides in a song. You can be pretty liberal with them and it's not gonna get really annoying. One of the secrets to making a really good sounding bass slide is making sure that you're sliding between the right notes. So G is the last chord in the first part and we're going to an A. So I'm gonna start on a G and slide down to an A. But a bass isn't the only instrument that can slide, so let's try the same thing on a guitar. So I just double track those one hard right and left. Sounds like this. That works really well. In the same vein, but a little more aggressive, you can do a pick scrape, which I actually had to mess around with quite a bit when I started recording them because you think you wanna go, but that sounds terrible. You actually don't need to go very far and you wanna go a little bit slower. The slower you go, the lower the pitch will be. The faster you go, the higher the pitch will be. So if you go like, right, versus. So now we've layered up a drum fill, a bass slide, and either a pick scrape or a guitar slide. But 
What if we did something that was a little bit more cohesive with all three of those instruments? In classical or jazz, you might call this next one like a tutti figure. It just means we're gonna play the same thing all together. All three instruments are gonna play the same part. And it's gonna be like a cool staccato stop kind of a thing, like a da 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 So that sounds pretty good, except that there's also a bunch of keys and sequencers and extra guitars and stuff going. If I mute all of that just as the transition hits, it might be a little more powerful. Then it's a really clean staccato sound. What I like about performance-based transitions is that they're baked into the composition. You don't need anything except for your instruments, unlike the production and sound design type of transition techniques that we're gonna talk about next. This is very fun to me, although it sometimes can be a bit tedious only because it involves a lot of making small tweaks and automation and parameters and settings. But I really like this part of the process because I like getting down into the sort of nitty gritty. Well, let's start with the most simple and effective thing, a reverse crash cymbal. So I just downloaded this one off of Splice, but if you have something like Easy Drummer, you can just print a crash and then reverse it in your DAW if you want. That's super easy, I've done that a lot too. No matter what kind of transition it is, you wanna think about where you are and where you're going, because that'll usually give you a pretty good idea of how to get from one to the other, because then you're just bridging the gap. In this particular transition, we're trying to ramp up the intensity and the energy. We're going from a point of lower energy to one of higher energy, and we wanna sort of bridge the gap between the two. So this is an obvious sort of trajectory for it to have, to go from lower to higher in every way, in terms of dynamic intensity, maybe pitch. So here's how it sounds in context. This is kind of like a very basic move and it's very overused, but it's also incredibly effective. You can also jazz it up by like slicing it up like this. That works pretty well, actually. If you're ramping down, you wanna kinda do the opposite of what we're doing here. You wanna have everything come down in intensity and energy. So I recently bought this plugin. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, Baby Audio Transit. This was a collaboration between Andrew Wong and Baby Audio, and I saw his video about it and I was like, that looks amazing, and it was only 60 bucks. I love Andrew Wong's channel. I don't know him. Um, I don't know Baby Audio. I just bought this. This is not sponsored or anything. The idea with this plugin is that it's supposed to save you a bunch of time with automation because you can kind of do it all within the plugin, so you don't have to have, you know, 50 lanes of automation. I was able to put together this little riser here. A riser is kind of a cheat code to add tension to your transitions. It seems to tap into some kind of primal connection between a rising pitch and urgency, and you can use that to add anticipation for the next thing that's coming when you release all of that tension. There's a couple different types of risers. There's like a noise riser that's like just white noise, and it kind of just is a cutoff, so it goes like and that's what creates the riser effect. And then there's like a pitch riser that starts from a low pitch and goes kind of smoothly and continuously to a higher pitch. And we're gonna do one of those in a second. Transit has a noise module, which sounds like this. The cutoff just increases until you're all, all you're hearing is that. And then I added some reverb, OTT, which is like a limiter, a little bit of a pitch shift, and then some distortion. to make it a little gnarlier. It almost sounds like it, the air is being sucked out of the room. This is just what I was able to put together in this in like 10 minutes. There's like a whole universe of stuff that you could do with this. I think that works pretty well. But it's also designed so that you can put it on something like your drum bus or your guitar bus so that maybe as it approaches the transition, 
the reverb goes up and it becomes a bit more washy and it just kind of spills into the next part, that sort of thing. That's like a rabbit hole and a half, but I'm, I'm looking forward to playing around with that because I think that's super fun. So here's a riser that I made from scratch. This is a pitch riser that I, I made using a free synth that comes with Pro Tools. This is Vacuum from AIR. So I started with just a synth sound. Sort of annoying actually by itself, but nothing special. And then I layered a bunch of delay and reverb on it. And then I just had the pitch constantly changing from low to high. But slowly. Sounds a little bit like a siren. So once again, with the pitch, you want to make sure that you're landing on a pitch that sounds good with that chord that you're landing on. In this case, I just stuck with the root because I, I want it to be kind of subtle. I want it to blend. As you can see right here, we've got the pitch bend automation and it's just going continuously from one note to the next. I also automated the volume a bit here because as the pitch goes up, it also kind of gets a bit louder or it's it's at least perceived to be more loud. So I turned it down a little bit as it goes. And then I did a fade out at the end. So it's kind of subtle, but pretty powerful. You can and should try combining these different transition elements because although you might create a monstrosity of overkill, you can also create epic super transitions that will be incredibly exciting. If I have all three of these going at once, let's see how that works. The reverse cymbal and the noise riser kind of fill the same purpose uh, and sound pretty similar, but still works pretty well. As long as they're not fighting each other, it's fine. A transition is more than just a build. It's also the other side of the transition, the drop. You want to stick the landing with something exciting. So that's almost as important as the transition measure or two before you actually get to that second part. So I've added once again a homemade bass drop. This is actually pretty easy to make. That's pretty fat. Once again, I'm using this free synthesizer. And then I've just compressed the crap out of it with a rouser and then low past it so that it's just the fat low end. So it's kind of like a reward, a release, a nice catharsis after we have this sort of building of tension. Oh, I know what it is, it's fucking missing. I muted the bass. So all I've done with this is like the reverse of the riser. It's a continuous shift down. Because you are a smart and handsome bunch, I'm sure that you will not be surprised in the least to learn that transitions is one of many topics that I cover in my songwriting course, Complete Rock and Metal Songwriting. It also includes things like how to write riffs and song structures, how to compose parts for drums and bass, melodies, lyrics, the works. And you can find out more about that at the link in the description below. If you're feeling really crazy, you can do like a reverse bass drop where you do the pitch bend from low to high, but starting from a very low note like this one. This is a two octave pitch bend. That might be too much. It's pretty massive though. I really love a cinematic feel to a song, so I am definitely not above adding cinematic Foley type of sound effects. So I am once again going to go into my splice library where I downloaded some wild like explosion sounds. Um, this one has a bass drop built in. Let's see which one sounds the best. I'm gonna take out the bass drop for the timing. This one sounds pretty awesome. I wanna cut out some of the low end because it's already kind of a muddy mess. I want a little bit of... 
Yeah, so I'm cutting out everything below like 80 hertz. Depends on how much you want to feel it, you know? Like if this is also your bass drop, you might want to leave the low end in. It can be as subtle or crazy as you want it to be. Shit, that actually hits pretty hard. There's one that we haven't talked about so far, and it's one that I use a lot, but also I will caution you against doing too much because you do this too many times in a song and the listener starts to feel faked out. And that's the, the full stop of at least the rhythm section. A full stop allows you to cut out things that are distractions from the primary elements that you wanna focus on in that little period of time. And then you get to have it all come crashing back in right on the one, but then you have to decide what the most powerful element is for that moment. For me, it's the piano. It might work to leave some of the production elements in. To me, that feels like you're on a roller coaster and suddenly the cart goes flying off the track for a second and you're like, and then it lands again. It's kind of like a pulling the rug out from under the listener for just a second. And that makes the impact much more effective. There are a lot of bands and writers who do this in every song, maybe more than once. I've heard two and three full stops in songs before. Metal and metalcore especially can use this egregiously and it reduces the effectiveness of it when you use it too much. I actually think this might be a really effective moment to bring back that low reverse bass drop swell thing. That works pretty well, I think. And now for the final transition. transition. If you want to learn about the most important step in the songwriting process and how to not let it screw up your whole music career, watch this video right here and I'll see you real soon.